Hey, what's up YouTube? In this video, I'll be showing you how to make a bowling alley for all of your city building needs. Let's take a look at the inside. The first thing that we are greeted with as we enter our bowling alley is a place to pay and simultaneously get our bowling shoes. This bowling alley also has an arcade, a little mini restaurant where we can get some food and some drinks, and not to mention the actual reason that we're probably here, it has five lanes where we can actually do some bowling. I hope that you guys enjoyed this tutorial. If you do and you're new around here, please do consider subscribing to the channel and clicking the little bell next to the subscription button. That'll ensure that you get all my stuff sent directly to your sub box. And do bear in mind, this is a two-part tutorial. This is part one, where we will focus on the entire outside of the build, and in part two, we will do all of the cool stuff that I just showed you. You'll be able to find that in the card system, description below, and the top of the comment section once it's ready. And without any further ado, let's get started. Now, just before we start building our bowling alley, here are all of the materials that you will need to make it. Please do make sure that you have access to all of those materials and enough of them as well. The amount of space required to make the bowling alley is a 41 by 63 block area as represented by the large white rectangle on the ground. I would highly recommend making this grid if you are planning out a city as it will make sure that you don't bump into anything else. Also, bear in mind that this includes the car parking spaces out front, but not the road that you may have seen perhaps in the thumbnail or at the start of the video. And that's it. Pause the video if you have to. Gather all that stuff. Make sure you've got enough room to make it. Make sure you know where you want to make it. Even make the grid if you like. And once you're ready, we can go bowling. Step one, my avid bowling friends. Come all the way over to the front left-hand corner of your grid. If you've made it. Count backwards from the corner. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. This is where we're going to kick things off. Begin by placing a row of 13 red concrete going right from this spot. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Extend that 13th block towards you. And then to the right by 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Place a white concrete in front of that block. One on top of it. One going left. Up by three. One, two, three. Go right one. Up one. Right by four. One, two, three, four. Go down one. Right one. Down by three. One, two, three. Go left one. And then down. This is the shape that we should have. So. You can fill this shape in, by the way, just before we continue making the rest of the bowling alley. The only space that you have to leave is a two block wide gap right in the bottom middle, as this is where a door is going to go. If you like, you can preemptively place the door by destroying a couple of blocks in the middle and placing an iron door set one block backwards. In addition to this, you can place some white concrete, covering up all of this empty space like so. You can then grab your red concrete, and we are going to take the three middle blocks at the top of the build here, and we're going to place a row of red, a row of white on top, a row of red on top, and then three rows of white. One, two, three. So, to give us something which should look exactly like this. What we're going to do next is we're going to take the bottom right hand corner of the bowling pin and we're going to place a red concrete behind it. We're then going to extend it to the right by six. One, two, three, four, five, six. We're then going to extend that block backwards and then to the right by 12. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And now what we're going to do is going to take a long time, quite literally a long time. 
We want to extend this block right here, this 12th block, backwards by 50. Free. So, uh, <laughs> that's right, we have to extend that 12th block backwards by 53. That is 5 free, 50 free. Ah, vocal cords, help me. So, this block, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53. Perfect. That wasn't so bad. Here's the thing. What we now have to do is extend this 53rd block all the way across the build, all the way across the back, right? And we then want to connect it to the front. If you are having difficulty judging distances, I would recommend extending from the front on this side backwards and then joining at the back. I just have a handy grid here so I know exactly where it's going to connect. I don't have to make such guesses. So now that we have the very large bowling alley laid out ladies and gentlemen what we can now do is start adding some details to it almost all of the details are going to be added to the front there's not too many details around the sides because of course we need to use the sides of the bowling alley on the inside so we can't add too many details that will impact the interior what I want you to do is, starting from the very first red concrete block that we placed, I want you to place two white concrete going right. One, two. Place a row of three glass. One, two, three. And then two white concrete. One, two. Three glass. One, two, three. Three white concrete. One, two, three. Extend forwards. Extend to the right by one. Place two glass. And then two white concrete, or it's actually three white concrete, just like this. So that is what we want to have. And we want to mirror this on the opposite side, by the way. So as we come all the way over to this right-hand corner here on the right-hand side, we place two white concretes going left, one, two, three glass going left, one, two, three. We then want to place two white concrete, three glass, three white concrete, extend forwards, and then left, two glass pane, and then three white concrete. So, all in all, the bowling pin, <laughs> I got stuck on it. We want to have something which should look like this. I want you to then take this entire row of everything, literally all of it, and I want you to add another row on top of it, meaning everywhere that you got the white concrete, you want to add another row of white concrete, and everywhere that you have the glass, I would recommend that you add another layer of glass. So, I think it's easiest if we place the white concrete first, but that is just me, and then I like to place the glass afterwards. I think it's a tad bit easier for me to place. And what we will end up with should look exactly like this. Perfect. So, what goes above this, ladies and gentlemen, is a row of red concrete. In, in its entirety, so literally following the entire shape along, we're going to place a row of red concrete that simply sits above everything that we've just made. So, a row of red concrete extending just directly above everything that we have just made. Like this. What we then want to do is place a row of white concrete above it. So, above the row of red, we want to have a row of white concrete. And I don't know whether you guys are going to be able to guess the next colour, because once we have added the row of white, we want to add another row of red concrete. And hopefully you guys can see why we might be doing this as we finish up. So, the reason that we have designed the build in this way is because it emulates a certain something. Something that is very important, of course, to bowling. The bowling pins. What we will also do, we can't do all of it now, but we will lay a row of quartz slab all the way around the top layer of the red concrete. So the quartz slab will wrap around the entire building like this. And I'm showing this to you because the next thing that we have to accomplish is we have to extend 
all of everything that we've just done, so the white concrete, the red concrete, the white, the red, and then the quartz slab, we have to extend it around the entire build. What do I mean by this? What I mean by this is... We want the entire building to kind of have the bowling pin theme. We're not going to be adding windows to the sides until the next tutorial, which is going to completely cover the inside of the bowling alley. Because we have a lot of stuff on the inside. It is not empty. We have loads and loads of stuff in there. So if we start adding windows randomly, then we have an opportunity to uh, mess up where we can potentially make the interior look really cool. Because of course you don't want to place stuff directly in front of windows. Windows, or at least I don't like to because it uh, I, I just don't think it looks very good so you'll even be able to choose your own locations for certain windows and perhaps certain other uh, interesting uh, design ideas for the build as well but we are saving it until the next video again where we can do the interior once the interior is done that of course lets you know what you can and cannot do in regards to the actual build. So, if we place like a big giant window like across the entire back of the bowling alley right now, we kind of have like lanes there where like bowling balls are going to be flying into and stuff. So, it, it wouldn't make too much sense really. So, once you have added all of the rows of concrete, just like this, coming up the entire building, we are going to place quartz slabs around the top of the red concrete as well. And I am noticing we kind of have a... Uh, it kind of looks a little bit crazy without it being filled in, to be completely honest with you guys. It does look a little bit insane, doesn't it? The building looks very, very strange, I think. Uh, kind of like just empty with all of these rows of concrete. It looks kind of crazy on the inside. It actually looks so, so, so much better once we do start filling it up because it's such a large area. That's crazy. What I would also like you to do once you have filled in all of those walls is I want you to make the top of the bowling pin 3D. So we're going to take all of the red concrete and all of the white concrete extending out from the top of the bowling pin and we're going to add two rows to it because the width of the top of the bowling pin is about three rows as well like this so it makes sense that it should kind of extend backwards. You could even kind of like extend the shape of the bowling pin and we've got to kind of do this carefully. The shape of the bowling pin inside if you like so that it kind of what's the word it kind of like continues on so that there's some continuity as uh, as you kind of like enter the bowling alley if you like so i'm trying to remember exactly how it looks it looks it, it's uh, kind of like this isn't it so if you wanted to like you can transfer that onto the inside so that it's just like nice and 3d so to speak like that when it comes to the actual, like, roof of the bowling alley, the roof is actually going to be pretty much white concrete. So the top of the bowling alley, we are going to later on fill it in with white concrete, okay? Just like this. But... Not only do we have to fill the top of the bowling alley in with white concrete, we have to do a couple of things as well. So, we have to refloor the bowling alley. The majority of the floor to the bowling alley is going to be birch wood planks. As we customize the insides, we are going to be chopping the floor up just a little bit. Not in a crazy way, but we are going to be chopping the floor up into different bits and pieces. Uh, but most of the floor is actually going to be birch wood planks. And here's the thing about the ceiling as well. The roof is made out of white concrete, but the ceiling on the inside is made out of block of iron. So, we have almost a double roof, just like this. It actually takes a really long time to do. Typically speaking, I would usually cut all of this out, but I'm going to see how long this is actually going to take us. It, I usually cut these parts out for a reason, 
because it doesn't seem to me that you guys need to watch me like completely chunk out all of the floor and then the roof and stuff it almost seems as though like it's a it's a lot of extra time in the video but on this occasion and I'd love it if you guys could weigh in on this what do you think should I keep this part of the video in for the future should me just like rambling and we can kind of like just chill out and we can kind of like knock out all of the floor uh, together and we can do all the ceiling together or would it be better to cut it out and then the video is a little bit shorter and you can kind of like pause it and then you can hit play again once uh, we actually both hit uh, the same point in time. So I'll let you guys decide that and I'd really appreciate it if you could leave a comment if you've made it this far if you're listening to me say this. But this is quite a bit of work. It's almost as if we're doing the same thing four times in total. Because, of course, we have to knock out the floor, which is equivalent to placing it. Almost a little bit uh, harder, actually. It I think it almost takes a little bit more time to destroy the floor than it does to actually place it. So we have to destroy it, we have to place it, which is like doing the same thing twice. And then we have to place two roofs. Well, we have to place a ceiling and a roof. And the reason that we're doing the floor, by the way, is because once we have done the ceiling, we're barely going to be able to see inside of here. So that's why we're starting with the floor. There's a little bit of logic involved, ladies and gentlemen. So the reason that we have a double ceiling as well, by the way, the reason that we have, say, like the block of iron and then on top, then we have the roof. So we have like the ceiling and then the roof is because then we are able to place built-in lights into the ceiling. We're actually going to run rows of sea lanterns into the ceiling. <laughs> sea lantern ceiling. And we're going to uh, build it in. So if we only had one layer of roof... That would mean that the sea lanterns uh, would like be visible from the top of the roof. So like if you've got an elevated position in your city or wherever, wherever it is you may be building a bowling alley. I actually think it'd be kind of funny if you had like a full-on survival related village or world and then you just had a bowling alley there. <laughs> Like you've got, you've got like villager houses, you've got like, f like you know, iron block farms, and you know you've got all sorts of stuff like good survival stuff. Like everything's made out of wood. Maybe it's even in the medieval style. And then you've got a bowling alley, <laughs> just, just in the middle of nowhere, just like it was in the good old medieval times back in the like 1600s or whenever that was. <laughs> Everybody was like, lit. there was like horse-drawn carriages and stuff, and there was like blacksmiths and, you know, like kings and queens and like castles. And then out of nowhere, there's just like a big giant bowling alley. <laughs> It'd be kind of funny anyway. So, I am using mostly birch for the floor. I did mention earlier that the birch is going to be divided a little bit, but it's actually not too bad whatsoever. Quite often times, I'd rather start with a blank canvas anyway. I don't know how you guys feel about this, but especially in, say, like, modern building quite a lot, modern builds have large expanses of build, like big giant blocks and shapes, and then they've got kind of, like, windows carved into them. Rather than trying to build the detail in, I'd rather like just completely start off with a big giant blank canvas and then I'd like to start carving the details in rather than the other way around like trying to build the detail and it just strikes me as easier. So all in all we have now cut out the entire floor, now we can place all of the birch. So this end of the bowling alley towards the back end of our building is where all of the lanes are going to go. We have, I believe, about five lanes. The lanes themselves are actually made out of birch. They are divided between each other. They're divided using, say, like, light grey concrete and perhaps some slabs and stuff. So it's not really a big deal, um, just carving into the birch a little bit. In addition to that, you know the area where you actually bowl from and where you kind of, like, sit and wait and chill out with your friends or family, or even if you bowl by yourself, I guess, you know, you just sat there by yourself that area the floor is oak wood but it's a very small area 
And then in between all of that, we've got like, uh, there's an arcade section, which also has a birch floor. We've got a little restaurant section where you can get some food and what have you and some drinks. And that is also birch as well. So we're really not doing, uh, we're really not doing anything that's, uh, that's going to be too impactful. It's not really going to, uh, you know, mess with us too much. So I know that you guys might have seen the start of the video and I'm sure that I showed everything off I showed you everything that was in the art uh, in the bowling alley But I'm just gonna run over it again because I'm actually quite happy about it So the way that the bowling alley is divided is the is we've got like a big entrance area It's almost like a, an airlock or something like you know out of like a spaceship Where you've got like that room that you enter and then you get to like go into somewhere like it's like a a place in between and that's where you start off and immediately you've like you go to the counter and you can you know pay for as many games of bowling or you know as much time as you want and what have you and on the opposite side of the counter you have the shoots uh, immediately to your left as you enter the bowling alley I've decided to include an arcade because a lot of you guys are asking for it some of you may know or may not know this but on Fridays and sometimes, sometimes other times during the week, I like to do a stream called Stream City. And uh, I'm, I'm like currently building a city out of all of these builds that I'm actually putting together now. So, you know, at some point in time, I'll be adding this bowling alley to Stream City as well. And uh, I usually get loads and loads and loads of requests to make stuff. And one of the things that I got asked was to please make a bowling alley and have it have like a food court or a cafeteria or whatever and also an arcade. So that's exactly what I've done. And this is kind of exactly how my actual bowling alley is sort of set out as well. I kind of took some inspiration from real life. Um, funnily enough, like, it's really not too far off, this bowling alley, what, uh, what mine is like. And uh, I kind of take inspiration like that uh, out of, like, for all of my builds too. So, like, if I was to make, like, a Starbucks or whatever, there's a good chance that it's very similar to the one that, like, that I would go to. Or the same thing with, like, a Costa Coffee or a McDonald's or whatever. Like, the layouts are all taken, like, or, or the uh, inspiration at the very least. Not necessarily, like, straight up taken. All of the inspiration is, uh, is taken a little bit from real life, which I think is the best way to do city builds. It's fun completely coming up with something like brand new and insane and interesting for your city builds, but if you take something from real life, it's going to feel a little bit more authentic, I think. Because, I mean, if it's, if it's that way in real life, if you apply it to Minecraft, it's going to feel right, isn't it? So, the- whoa! That is insane! We have done the floor now! So, all of the time that it took us to do that, it is equivalently going to take us that exact same amount of time to do the ceiling. So I guess that we should get cracking. We're going to do the lower layer first of the ceiling. As I mentioned, the lower layer of ceiling is going to be made out of block of iron. I've opted to not put any skylights into the ceiling this time. I feel as though that the bowling alley, or at least mine, again, taking inspiration from real life, is kind of like low lit almost. Like, obviously, you can see, it's, you know, bright enough to see in there, but there's just kind of like that element of like darkness to mine. So I'm kind of emulating that as well by having a, uh, by having no, by having very few windows really like around the build. There are some on the sides as we'll be adding into the next to tutorial, but um, there's no skylights, which is a great and easy way, by the way, if you do want to add natural light into a build and you don't really want to ruin the walls of your build, a great way to do that is by adding a skylight, which is simply glass block in the ceiling. I mean, we can mess around with that concept in the next video in part two, but for this part, we are going to just keep it the way it is. As I've mentioned before, I would absolutely hate to 
do something in this part of the tutorial which would then impact us and make the next part of the tutorial a little bit weird so like as we were coming up to like if we added like a load of windows and stuff onto the bowling alley now and then you know it came to the next part of the tutorial and it's like ah there's supposed to be like a whole bar section here and it wouldn't make sense if that was there that's exactly what i'm trying to avoid i would also by the way urge you if you want to you can change these materials i probably wouldn't change the white concrete and the red concrete materials because i think that that's kind of synonymous with bowling Sym synonymous meaning like whenever you think of like red and white or whether whether you think of like bowling pins or bowling eyes i always think of red and white when I think of bowling alleys because I mean that's like the classic colored bowling pin so I think that they're kind of like tied together might be a better way of saying that and uh, I mean I guess you could change the color of the building you could perhaps make it a tad more realistic this one is a bit stylized I like stylizing buildings and what I mean by stylizing is like if this is a bowling alley I want it to be completely apparent from the outside that it is a bowling alley because if we just make a load of buildings in our cities and towns and all of that that are all just sort of the same but they just have a sign on them that's like oh this is bowling but it's just like a big boring terracotta or brick building then it's like mm, I want to be able to tell from a mile away what I'm going to be going and taking a look at the same sort of thing applies to say like the cinema or the movie theater as you might want to call it that I made recently. The outside of it is the colors are actually sort of similar to this except on the top of the movie theater we have a big giant bucket of popcorn and there's like an old-fashioned film reel. I guess it's not a completely dissimilar idea to what we have with the bowling pin. I think that the fact that the building is two-tone white and red and the fact that we have a giant bowling pin as the entrance, I think that that pretty much tells you um, what, what you're kind of in for. The only way that we could possibly make it any more sort of bowling themed perhaps is if we added some like bowling balls as windows, which you'd best believe that I did kind of think of actually. We have almost placed all of this block of iron. We're about three quarters of the way done now. Now we are going to use our white concrete, which we can just get out again, and we can place the roof. As I mentioned, the reason that there is a double roof is because we are going to be adding lights into our bowling alley. We're actually not going to place them now. It's going to be a bit easier to place them later. The reason for this is that the lights in the ceiling are actually going to coincide with the positionings in between the bowling alleys. Like, you guys you guys may have been bowling before. I'd, I'd like to bet a decent chunk of you have, right? You've been bowling, you've got the individual bowling lanes where you chuck the ball down. Well, in between those, you've kind of got like a little bit of separation, haven't you? Like where the bumpers are and there's just like... I think that's actually like where the bowling ball, like in between the lanes, like underneath the floor, obviously. I think that that's where the bowling ball actually like travels. Like, because when you bowl, the you know, the ball like shoots down some sort of hole somewhere. Where I think it actually like you know it goes on to like a set of rails or tube or tunnel or whatever I don't even know exactly how it works and uh, I think it's in between those lanes that the bowling ball actually goes and that is where we're going to be placing the lights the lights are going to be placed in a particular fashion and uh, it's just going to be easier if we have everything marked out first like we'll be able to just like slot them in dead easily and you'll be able to see why everything is is the way it is and uh, I think that also adds a lot of balance to the build I think if you have a reason for where you put specific things in a build, such as lights, car parking spaces, windows, or like, I think if you have a specific reason, like instead of randomly just putting a window like somewhere, like just going all the way up the side of a building and just being like, yeah, I want to look good there. I think that it makes more sense and I think it's better if it, if there's like a more solid reason than like, I just thought one would look good here, you know, it's, uh, it just adds a little something. But once we have completed the ceiling to our bowling alley, which is a very 
lengthy task, I must say. I can't believe that it's actually taken us this long to do it. The build is kind of huge though, right? I mean, it's a, it's a massive build. It's really, really long and it has to be to accommodate all of the stuff that we're putting inside of it. I can't actually remember the last time that I actually kept part like a part like this in the video as well, which is kind of crazy too. This is the way that I actually used to do things. I remember when I was like building hotels and maybe like even the original version of this bowling alley and like big houses and stuff. I remember that I, I, I actually just like used to ramble on exactly how I've just done now. Just ramble on for like 10, 20, 30 minutes, however long it would be. And I don't know whether... And again, that's why I'd love it if you guys could uh, could weigh in on this. I have a feeling that you'd rather just skip straight past it because it's probably going to get quite annoying hearing me just reiterate the same stuff over and over and over again. But uh, you'll just have to let me know. And... I didn't know whether... I did consider adding another floor to this bowling alley, by the way. That's something that you might want to think about. I imagine it'd be quite easy to do, like, if you wanted to customize your own bowling alley. I think it'd actually be quite easy and uh, probably quite cool to do, too. Like, you just simply, like, repeat... <laughs> Funnily enough, I mean, I guess this is almost like a repeatable building, like you would just repeat the building just on top of itself, except you wouldn't place like another bowling pin, but you could easily place the entire wall section again and lay directly on top of here, you could lay just the birch planks, uh, I guess. So that, that might be something to think about, but... We have now completed that, ladies and gentlemen. We have a nice, crisp, empty building, completely colourful. I'm liking it. I think that we've done a really good job. So, now that that is done, ladies and gentlemen, the next thing that we are going to do is focus on the front of the building a little bit. We want to have, it works out to be, two rows of smooth stone directly in front of the most outward part of the building. So, if you can imagine it, we want to have a nice walkway that is just directly in front of the building. It works out to be more than two rows because the building has uh, a little bit of depth to it. But we just want to dig out an entire area that allows us to kind of just like walk around the front of the bowling alley. Now, this area I am making out of smooth stone. I've kind of opted to do this in my city. In my city, I have pretty much the roads where you drive. You can probably, like, tell just from, like, uh, the roads that I have laid out. The roads that we drive on are pretty much made out of grey concrete and white concrete. That's the road colour. That is, that's decided. That is done and dusted. But the pavement area where people walk on, I've pretty much decided to make it smooth stone. So I'm keeping continuity. If you want to change it, then that is completely up to you, of course. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to dig a three block wide space coinciding with the entrance. And it's going to be six rows long. One, two, three, four, five, six. And this is going to be a pathway that will lead you to the bowling alley. This will either uh, connect to a street or simply it connects to the car parking spaces like this. Now this area here, we actually need some grass. So I just need a little bit of grass for this section. What I basically want to do is I want to place oak leaves in the middle of a three block wide section like this, right? And then I want to place flowers around those leaves. So it's just basically to accent this little path. It will also provide a little bit of separation in between the car parking spaces and stuff. So we just want to have a little something like that, right? Now, the car parking spaces are dead easy to do. And we are just going to... I'm going to dig out the entire area here. So, all of the grass in between the edge of the building and uh, in between, like, the path on both sides, we're going to just dig all of this out. And I'll show you... I'll do one side and then we can do the other. So, quite simply, we have car parking spaces that are six blocks long. We start from the end here and we place a row of white concrete. Four rows of cyan terracotta, one, two, three, four, white concrete, one, two, three, four, white concrete, one, two, three, four, white concrete, right? 
So that's how the car parking spaces are going to look, and it's as simple as that. So white concrete extending towards the end. We have cyan terracotta in between all of the white concretes like this. And we will just have a nice set of car parking spaces. If you wanted to customize these in some sort of way, then of course you are more than able to, as you are with everything else with the build. But the reason that I chose to make them a different color, by the way, cyan terracotta instead of the gray, is because I want them to stand out a little bit from the road. But yeah, we're going to do this on both sides as well. So on this side also, we're going to do the same thing. We don't even have to destroy that row of white concrete that we have on the right side. I'm actually going to preserve it because um, that's going to just act as the edge of a car parking space anyway. It'll actually help us a little bit, save us a minute amount of time. Probably not even a, a minute, meaning a minute. Probably won't even save us a minute, but... <laughs> Um, you know, I, I guess it's easier than just like destroying it for the fun of it and then uh, putting it back again. So we only have three car parking spaces on the front and then we have all of this cyan terracotta in between. My cars and vehicles, the widest vehicle that I make is a four block wide vehicle and it's like a, it's like a fire engine or like uh, typically like a van or something massive like that. Most of my vehicles, even my cars, all of my cars are about three blocks or so wide. So that's why I make these a bit... Uh, a, a as wide as I do, uh, so you can get as, you know, whatever vehicles you like. Ladies and gentlemen, that is the bowling alley pretty much complete. That's the entire outside of the bowling alley done. The last thing that I'm going to do for you, uh, for you guys, and I'm not going to do this on recording, is I'm just going to extend that road there in front of the bowling alley, and then that kind of gives you an idea of how it would connect to the, uh, how your bowling alley would connect to your city streets or perhaps to a retail park or something like that. But ladies and gentlemen, all intents and purposes, we've done it. And we've done it all together. That, that was fun. Let me show you what it looks like all connected to the road though. So this is what the bowling alley will look like once you have completed the entire outside. This includes all of the car parking spaces, we've done the interior floor, and of course we've done the interior ceiling too. So this thing is completely prepped for us to do the entire interior. I do hope that you guys enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please do remember to subscribe to the channel if you're new around here and click that little bell next to the subscription button as that will ensure that you get all my videos sent directly to your sub box. If you want to make part two, you will be able to find it in the card system description below and the top of the comment section. It will be clearly linked there and you won't have to wait very long for it if you are watching this on the day that this has been uploaded. Thank you so much for watching everybody. I appreciate all of you very, very much. I love you all and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.